United Private Hire Drivers, putting drivers first. Don't forget to like our Facebook page. Follow the page and select See First to stay informed. To join, click on the button Sign Up. Our web address is www.uphd.org. Make your voice heard. Click the red button, join us today. Drivers can also subscribe to our newsletter by registering on our website. Click the red button, subscribe to our newsletter. United Private Hire Drivers, putting drivers first. United Private Hire Drivers, putting drivers first. Well, good evening uh, and welcome to this very special presentation uh, on, from UPHD on Facebook Live. I'm delighted to be joined by Neil Shah from the Stress Management Society, the Chief De-Stressing Officer, De-Stressor Officer. Um, it's going to be an exciting uh, hour, I think, an optimistic hour. Uh, despite everything that's going on, uh, we have to uh, take a step back and think about how we get mentally fit uh, for, for the circumstances around us and how we uh, manage our stress and how we emerge from this uh, stronger and more resilient uh, than ever. Um, just from my side, a quick, couple of quick updates. Uh, today was uh, the day we're expecting to hear back from the government on our pre-action uh, letter where we're challenging uh, the government, Transport for London, other licensing authorities to put out uh, reasonable regulations to uh, manage safety uh, in the private hire industry during uh, the uh, pandemic. Uh, so we'll we'll be saying some more about that um, uh, during the week, um, and uh, I think I think that's it. I mean, I suppose you know, as we as we as we um, as we go through this session today, we've got to remember that as we protect our our mental health, we know some people who lost their physical health and indeed lost their lives uh, during this COVID uh, crisis. We remember uh, Ayub Akhtar, uh, one of our long-standing members, who, who lost his life a few weeks ago. Uh, so uh, it's important that uh, we we remember and take care of our physical health. And today is International um, uh, uh, Memorial Day for workers. So we remember those people uh, who we've lost in this crisis and also have lost uh, their lives doing this job in other ways as well over the years. But with that all said, I'm going to hand over now to, uh, to Neil. Uh, Neil, take it away. Well, firstly, thank you so much for, for having me here this evening. It's a real pleasure to, to, to be here to talk to you and uh, your members. Um, and particularly, as you said, in this current challenging time that we find ourselves in, it's so important that we are willing to have conversations regarding our well-being, um, our, our mental, physical and emotional state. And we're willing to take action because... The reality is, is what we do now would define how well, number one, we navigate this situation and what kind of a, a state we're in at the other end of it. Because that's another thing that we've got to take on board is the world may never go back to what it was before this all happened. You know, many of us are yearning nostalgically for things to go back to what they were a few months ago. Mm. Chances are, it's, you know, we may never go back to that world again. So it's really important that we consider how we can adapt and improve our resilience to cope with whatever the future may hold for us. Um, so I'm going to adapt what, we, what we're going to do this evening a little bit. We had an intention of just going through a bit of a presentation, some slides. I think given the nature of um, the, 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 the discussion and the time we've got, I think it might be nice just to do something a little bit more informal, a bit more interactive, um, and, and also just to ensure that people have got a chance to sort of air their, their thoughts and concerns um, and, and, and also to consider sort of, you know, what help they need in this situation, because the reality is, and let me ask you, James, have you ever felt stressed before? Uh, I think it's probably easier to think of the times when I wasn't stressed than all the times that uh, I was, uh, Neil, so stressed all the time. Yes, no, absolutely. 
Absolutely, Absolutely James. And thank you for being honest with that. And the reality is we all have, you know, if I ask everyone that's present today to, 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 to tell me if they've ever felt stressed before, everyone at some point in some way, shape or form has felt stressed. It's an inevitable part of life. And if there's people out there saying they've never felt stressed before, then either they're, they, they don't recognise stress or they may just be in denial. So this is a, a natural part of life. Now, the reality is the world that we live in every day and in every way, it's becoming more challenging. It's becoming more pressurized. There's more stress, more pressure, more demands, more anxiety. And really, we need to consider what we can do because no one is coming on a white horse to save us. You know, there is no savior other than the person staring back at you in the mirror. And unless we're considering every day what action we can take to really start improving our health, our well-being, our happiness. The, 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 the sad fact of the matter is it's, it's, it will catch up with you eventually. And we've been around as an organization. So just to give a bit of a backstory, just what qualifies me to be here talking to you about stress and pressure this evening. Um, I, I started this organization 17 years ago in, in 2003. Uh, as a non-profit organization, essentially to help uh, people and organizations with advice, guidance and support to be able to recognize the true impacts of stress and to understand what we can do about it. Now, obviously, as the world has changed and evolved, the, the reasons for us getting stressed and, and, and finding ourselves under pressure have also increased with social media and the way that we work, the way we communicate, the way we interact and engage with each other. Um, has changed radically and drastically in a, in a relatively short period of time. So we are the evolutionary step. So we need to consider how do we evolve as individuals, as communities, but as a global society, so that we are able to navigate uncertain waters. And we don't know what's gonna happen in two months, three months, six months, let alone in five years time. So this is where what we do today is crucial to ensure that we're not only able to survive, but to thrive into an unknown future. So that's really where I, I, I want to start our discussion today. Um, and it's great that we've got lots of engagement interactivity in the, in the chat box. And I just want to ask everyone, if I talk to you about stress, if I say, have you experienced stress before? What does that mean to you? you? You know, when you think of stress, what happens to you? What do you feel? Or what do you experience when you go through stress? What are the kind of things that you would experience? So, you know, you're going about your daily lives, whether that's work, you're driving, you're home with your family, you're going about kind of your, um, your, your daily commitments. When you experience stress, what kind of things do you experience? It'd be really good to hear from people as to what your association with stress is, what your experience of stress actually is. And, you know, while, while we're waiting for people to, 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 to chip in on the, the chat box, James, what's your experience of stress? Um, well, I, I, can, I can say what... Um, my reaction to it is I can wake up uh, at night or in, very early in the morning not being able to sleep and suddenly feeling very um, anxious, you know, or sort of like hyper alert, if you like. It's a very uncomfortable, unsettling feeling when you're at a, at a time when you're trying to be relaxed and you should be asleep and you suddenly wake up alone, uh, you know, white, um, you know, sort of hyper stressed. Um, well, stress is, this, you, you know what I mean? You, you wake up in a very kind of anxious state of anxiety. Um, also, uh, when you can't think about other things, that there is something that's worrying you and that's all you can think about all and all the time. It just sort of preoccupies all your thoughts. Those are the things that happen to me. You, totally. You're, 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 you're bang on the money there. Your mind is always on. You can't switch off. You can't disengage. You're waking up in the night. Obsessive thoughts. Uh, uh, you, you lose your sense of humor. You don't want to engage. Um, you, you know, like you can't see the wood from the trees. So absolutely. So my colleague Duncan is here in the background. Duncan, there's a slide about understanding stress. I don't know if we can share that particular page uh, because I think that will be uh, very useful for everybody. So if Duncan is able to create some magic for us and share this, this page for us, that would be incredible. And it's really just to kind of talk through what happens when you get stressed. As with yourself and as with many people that are sharing their thoughts and comments in uh, the, the comment section, a lot of us tend to associate with the feelings or the emotions of stress. I feel panicky. I feel anxious. I feel overwhelmed. Excellent. The magic works. Thank you, Duncan. Mm -hmm. um, 
So, uh, you, you know, you, know you, you can't think clearly, you feel confused, you feel overwhelmed. Um, so these are the common things that we tend to relate with. But the reality is stress isn't a feeling or an emotion. It actually starts with a physical reaction. Your body goes into what's known as the fight or flight state, where you're really getting ready to fight or run away from whatever's causing the stress. So your, your heart starts pounding in your chest, your breathing becomes shallow and fast, your muscles start tightening up, you're feeling angry and hostile, your teeth are gritted, your blood is relaxed, your blood pressure increases, your blood sugar increases. Now all of these, essentially, all of these changes occur to enable you to fight harder or run faster. It's uh, to essentially equip you to, to cope with that saber tooth tiger that's attacking you. Now, the reality is most of us, in fact, none of us are facing a saber tooth tiger on a daily basis, but you might be dealing with uncomfortable, challenging situations. You might be dealing with uh, a sort of, sort of tension uh, or for, that are financially related, relationship related. It could be uh, for some of the things that are going on in, in, in your, your work setting. And that essentially creates the same internal reaction. It puts you in a state where you're ready to fight or run away. Now, you know, wanting to punch someone in your car in the face and, you know, leave the car and run down the road might feel like the thing you want to do, but it's probably not the most appropriate reaction. But the reality is when you get stressed, that is the, that is the, 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 the physiological state you've gone into. That is why stress for most of us in modern life is so counterproductive because the reality is there's nothing to fight, there's nothing to run away from, and you stay in this state, and it compounds and it compounds because there is no outlet for it. Because in order for you to burn that stress off, we need some physical activity. Your body's expecting to be fighting or running away. And then many of us eventually get to the point where we end up doing something that looks like this. And that's not my internet breaking. That's the third state, which we describe as freeze. Now, many of you may have experienced that before, where you literally just shut down. You, you can't think, you can't act, and you are frozen in, 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 because you're debilitated by stress. And whether that's external or internal circumstances, I know many of you are, are under stress because of situations with Uber and with the, 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 the current crisis and the lack of PPE, etc. These are external situations, and I'm not detracting from how they impact you. But there is also the internal response. So our internal response is in, a di in direct reaction, in direct response to what's happening outside of ourselves. Now, we do have a choice. Now, here's the thing. When you are facing external challenges, you are better equipped to deal with them when you're not operating from stress. Does that make sense? Because you can think more clearly. You can make better decisions. You can plan. You can think creatively. You, you can problem solve. You can think analytically and logically. And you'll probably find better solutions to your stress and your challenges when your mental faculties are working optimally, when you can think clearly. That is not possible when you're stressed. And I totally appreciate from you know the background conversations, many of you are under extreme stress and pressure and challenge because of the circumstances that you're facing. This is where I'm gonna encourage you to think about how you can take yourself out from that state so you can collectively work together to find a path out from this scenario. Does that make sense? It, it does, Neil. Um, I, I suppose the thing that's... Oh, we've got some feedback here. I don't know what it's causing that. Uh, I suppose the thing that uh, sticks in my mind is that um, it. how do we manage... Do, uh, and take this as a rhetorical question, if you like. Sure. Uh, we're fa we, we don't have the facts. We're fa facing a completely unprecedented, uncertain situation. So how do we think through a problem when we just don't have the information? We just don't know what's going to happen. Absolutely. And that's a great question. And I, I totally empathize with your situation. And in fact, many people we're speaking to at the moment, regardless of industry, regardless of background, are in a similar situation. They don't know the facts. They don't know what's going to happen next. They don't know the ongoing impact financially, economically, socially, politically. So in some way, shape or form, every one of us is facing what we would describe as a situation of VUCA. We live in a world that is volatile, is uncertain, is complex and ambiguous. Mm -hmm. We don't know how to prepare for an unknown future. But what we can do is put ourselves in the best mental, physical and emotional state to be able to navigate through this. And this mm -hmm. is where 
Thank you, Duncan. Um, the, the, you know, the question Duncan's posing now, is stress good or bad? Now, it's kind of like people saying money is the root of all evil. No, it's not. It's a piece of paper or a digit on a spreadsheet. Money is indifferent. It's what you do with it that will determine whether it's good or bad. Because you could buy drugs and guns and bombs with money, but equally you could buy food for uh, for your family. You could support you, you know underprivileged people. You could give to charity or, or support your community. So it's the money is indifferent. It's the way it's applied will determine whether it's positive or negative. Stress is the same. Stress is not good or bad. It's indifferent. And many of us associate stress as a negative response. We think that it's bad. But the reality is you couldn't get anything done. You would not be able to navigate your life if you didn't have a degree of stress. This is where I'm going to share something with you um, that, that um, uh, will really help to put this into perspective. It's a model that, uh, that we would call the spectrum of stress. Because stress isn't a black or white. I'm stressed, I'm not stressed, is more a spectrum from zero to 100. And when you get to the upper end of the stress spectrum, that's where it becomes excessive and it can be negative. But equally, the other end of the spectrum, it's negative as well. Duncan, could we have the performance zone slide, please? Wonderful, you're way ahead of the mark. You see, I, I couldn't do what I do without someone standing behind me making me look good. Uh, so I appreciate that. Um, so at the top end of the spectrum, we hit burnout, where you're under so much stress, so much pressure for such a long time. Eventually, it gets too much. You get frazzled, you get frustrated, you get angry, you get overwhelmed, you get exhausted. That is when it's too much. So if we look at this, I guess the simplest way to describe this model, it's kind of like the Goldilocks model. So at burnout, it's too hot. At rust out, we don't have enough stress. We don't have enough pressure. There isn't enough demand. Let's say, you know, uh, Liam's uh, sharing there that we've got to work over 65 hours a week to pay the bills. What if you could only get one or two hours of work every week and there wasn't any work? You couldn't get out. You couldn't earn money to pay the bills. Now, I assure you that would also be stressful, but in a different way. Does that make sense? Because it's not like excessive work where I'm having to shop, I'm having to operate, I'm having to function. It's the, the lack of operation puts you into a different type of stress. And that is where you'd be bored, sluggish, lethargic. You would be demotivated, demoralized. You'd get depressed. But that is equally damaging. And that's what we would describe as too cold. Then you've got the sweet spot in the middle, which is where it's just right, where your mental, physical, emotional state is optimized, where you're firing all cylinders, you're working hard, you're able to collaborate, you're able to navigate, you're able to uh, explore, you're able to think about how to find solutions to your challenges, and it's not overwhelming. You can deal with it. You can take it in your pace. Um, and this is where, yeah, exactly, so, you, you know, Mia's just mentioned, if you are earning the right amount of money, and you're working the right amount of hours under the right amount of pressure. So it's not too much, but it's not too little. We'd be flourishing. You get to the end of your shift. You've worked hard. You've earned money. You put money on the, uh, the food on the table and you're happy about it. And that's the other thing. When you're in the performance zone, you're happy. So I totally appreciate there are factors outside of your control that are impacted where you are on this spectrum. The thing that I am here to help you with is the things that are inside your control, not the things that are outside of your control. Does that make sense? Because yeah. there are things that we can do to bring ourselves into the performance zone. So yes, there are challenges outside of your direct control, which I am not in a position to be able to, to advise you or guide you on. James, I'm sure you and your colleagues will be able to provide more direct support with that. What I'm here to talk about is what you can do yourself to empower yourself. Now, the word power, when applied to a human being, quite literally means the ability to do or act. To empower someone is to give them the ability to do or act. The person with the greatest power has the greatest ability to do or act. I loved your video at the beginning where it was very much, you know, you, you know together you cannot be defeated. You, you, you know, that when you come together, when you're able to collaborate, when we're able to put ourselves in the right state, we become unstoppable. This is where it's really important. We are all considering what can we do to make sure we're fighting fit and ready to deal with whatever challenges we, we have to deal with outside of ourselves. So that's where, you know, being mindful of time, I just want to move on to something which I think will be really helpful and beneficial to people. And it's really our approach to stress, our definition of stress. It's just a simple way to be able to really be able to understand what it is 
So we can then consider what can we do to make sure that the stress we're under is not overwhelming us and is not start to negatively impact us. And just, you know, I don't want to get morbid, but I just do want to highlight a fact that when we are stressed, we go into survival mode. There are systems and functions of our bodies that will shut down when we're stressed. The immune system is one of them. Now, I'm not sitting here saying things like PPE and those kind of things are not important, but I'm here telling you directly that if you're stressed, you're tired, you're exhausted, you're overwhelmed, you are going to be more susceptible to the virus than a lack of PPE. And I say that, and there's science to back this up, that when we are strong, when we're healthy, when we're in a good space, our immune system is optimized and we are more resilient, much more resilient to illness. So, you, you know, stressed people are more likely to get ill. So this is where it's not just about, oh, we're smiling and happy. This is going to have an impact on your ability to navigate this, this situation, particularly those of you who are still needing to work. So this is really why it's so important that we consider what we can do. So that's where our definition is something that is, is very important for, for, for people to be able to get their head around because we can't look for a solution to a challenge we don't understand. So we really want to be able to ensure that at the end of this session, at the very least, you have a sense of what you're dealing with and understand what action you need to take to be able to really start to take your life forward in a more positive way. So we have an analogy that we, um, we base on an engineering analogy. We call it the bridge analogy. Um, and it's really a simple way to be able to get your head around what stress is. So if we consider a bridge, any bridge, let's say Tower Bridge in London, Sydney Harbour Bridge, Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco, it doesn't matter. Whatever the bridge is, if you put more pressure, more demand, more load on that bridge, you put taxis, lorries, buses, trains, planes, cruise ships, helicopters, me and a Boeing 747s, I don't care how well constructed the bridge is, every single bridge on this planet, if enough pressure is applied for long enough, will ultimately collapse. Before it collapses, we will know it's not doing well because it will start bowing, bending, fracturing, buckling, cracking, creaking. And at that point, we've got one of two choices to prevent the bridge from collapsing. Those two choices are either number one, take the pressure off, or number two, strengthen the bridge shore it out, better equip it to bear that load effectively. Now, I totally appreciate there are many things on your bridges you cannot remove. There are things outside of your control, the, 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 you know, whether that's family, financial, work factors, the challenges that you're facing within the industry. These are things that are outside of our control now on our bridge. There are some things that you may be able to restructure or reprioritize take off your bridge temporarily and bring them back on later. Uh, you know, I'm not here to say what's possible, what's not. I'm just asking you to consider what we could do about the load. But even if you cannot do anything, you cannot do a single thing about the load itself, there is still an, another option, which is we can strengthen the bridge. We can develop strategies and mechanisms to ensure we are regularly taking action to build a stronger bridge. There are many, many different things that we can do. And I'd just like to spend the, the time we've got together just exploring what could we do. And you know, many of us, when we get stressed, our automatic reaction is to reach for something that's actually likely to make the situation a whole lot worse. You know, we've done many surveys over the years. And we always explore what are the common things that people are likely to do when they get stressed? What are the top four things that you're likely to reach for? And we do have a slide around this, um, uh, Duncan, if we could. And the, yeah, wonderful. And the things that people are very likely to turn to when they are extremely stressed, you know, if I say to you, I'm so stressed, I need a something, a blank, how would you fill the blank? The top answer for many people around the world turn into alcohol, uh, maybe turn into nicotine, caffeine, uh, refined sugar products like chocolate, biscuits, cakes, sweets. In some way, shape or form, regardless of where in the world you are, these are some of the common things. Now, I appreciate, you, you know, we have, we have um, uh, many of our, bu our business programs are in the Middle East. We've got uh, sort of a lot of clients in, in places like uh, the UAE and Saudi. And obviously, they're not going to turn to alcohol, but they are likely to to use coffee, to use sugar, to chocolate, biscuits, etc. So in some way, shape or form, these are universal. Everyone on the planet is likely to reach for one of these things as one of their strategies to deal with stress.
Now, here's the thing. All of these substances have a stimulating effect on the system. If you are stressed, your body's already in a stimulated state because your heart's pounding, your breathing's shallow and fast, you're already hyperstimulated. Putting in one of these substances is only going to make the situation worse. I'm not here, you know, preaching to people, telling them what to do and what not to do. What I am asking you to consider is don't medicate stress with a substance that is only going to make things worse. What I'm asking people to consider is, you know, if you're doing these things socially, you know, when you're relaxed, that's up to you, your choice. I'm not here to tell you what to do and what not to do. All I'm saying is do not turn to these things when you're stressed in the, with the belief that they're going to alleviate that stress. They're only going to make things worse. Uh, Duncan's just shared in different parts of the world, in the Middle East, it tends to be fast food that comes out top of the list, then caffeine, then sugar, and then nicotine. But in some way, shape, or form, these are pretty universal. So what can we do instead? Instead of turning to, to things that don't work, what can we do? And this is something that I'd just really like us to, to, to consider as part of, you know, kind of the, the, how we take the message from this, this discussion forward. Well, firstly, when you've gone into stress, as we've already established, the fight or flight response that you, you are experiencing is preparing your body for some kind of physical activity to escape from danger or to, 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 to fight the threat. If that is the case, physical activity is the antidote. One of the simplest things that you can do, and I, I note I'm using the term physical activity. I'm not necessarily talking about going off and doing exercise or doing a five or 10K run. If you want to do that, great. If you want to lift, lift heavy things, wonderful. If you want to do yoga or go to a gym at some point in the future, if they ever open again, entirely up to you. But there are many, many different ways that you can get physical activity into your life. It could be as simple as just walking, stretching, walking up and down the stairs, even moving on the spot, but just moving your body will start to burn off the stress hormones, things like adrenaline and cortisol and various other substances that your body uh, produces. So get moving. Now, particularly for those, you, you know, as many of you are driving for a living, it could well be that you know, taking breaks where possible, so you can get out, have a stretch, have a bit of a walkabout. But also, what could you do in the seat? And there is ways that even if it's just tensing and relaxing your muscles in a traffic jam, you know, gripping the steering wheel really tightly, clenching your teeth, clenching your butt cheeks, and then releasing. Literally, tensing and releasing your muscles is going to start releasing some of that pressure that's building up. So wherever you are, whatever you're doing, there's always some kind of action you can take. But there's one last thing that I would like us to consider. Because yes, actually, before we get to that, there's a couple other things to, to, to share. Um, but your physical activity is important. What you consume, I know it's really easy when you're working long hours and you're driving just to grab something that you can eat quickly in the car and you know fast food and that kind of thing. Now, this is where, again, the poor diet uh, potentially is going to have impact on your health, well-being, increase your chances of heart disease, diabetes. And as we've already learned in this circumstance, people with underlying health conditions are so much more at risk. Now, most of those underlying health conditions are very much as a result of the way we live our lives. Let's look at this as an opportunity to, to reset the counter and really start looking after ourselves. And if that means, you know, preparing some healthy food to take with you before your shift so you've got something available. Um, you, you know, having fresh fruits and vegetables and, and nuts and seeds to snack on rather than chocolate and biscuits is all going to really help as best as possible to, to, to ensure that you're keeping yourself healthy. I know it's always easy to, to reach for the energy drinks, the Red Bull, the coffee when you're working long shifts and you're tired, but actually staying hydrated is going to be so beneficial for your well-being, drinking lots and lots of water. Well, something I heard recently from somebody that drives for a living, they don't like to drink water when they're driving because it means that they need to go to the toilet. So they're actually depriving themselves of one of the most important resources for optimal well-being because they're worried about having to go to the toilet. Now, again, I, you know, I, I appreciate that's a challenge. I don't know what the solution to that is, whether that, that, that it means that you might need to 
factor in a few minutes here and there for a break. We can get out, stretch your legs and use the bathroom. But don't deprive yourself of water because that's creating a whole host of other potential challenges. Um, but the last most important thing, this is something that every one of us can do, no matter where we are, no matter what we're doing, no, 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 whether we're driving, whether we're stationary, you, you know, we could do this whilst we're doing something else. It's the most important thing we need to do to survive. It's also the most important thing that we need to do for our well-being. It's the first thing that you did when you arrived into this world. It is the last thing that you will do before you leave this world. Any guesses? What could I be talking about? I'm, I'm guessing breathing. Thank you, James. It's absolutely your breath. Now, when we're stressed, we tend to breathe shallow and fast, which means we're not getting up on oxygen on board. That leads to us feeling panic and, uh, panicky and anxious. If you feel panicky and anxious, it's a lack of oxygen in your brain that's creating that sense of panic. So by taking slow, deep breaths, it actually dramatically and tremendously changes our state. At some level, we all know this to be true. If someone is stressed, panicky and anxious, what do we say? Calm down, take a deep breath. It's very easy to give that advice to other people. I'm encouraging you all to take that advice on board yourself. So I'm going to finish our discussion before we open up to any questions or any comments or any feedback um, from, from the, the audience. It's just to share something with you that we can all do, no matter where we are, no matter what else is going on. And it's an exercise that I call uh, baby breath, because it's literally reminding us to breathe as we were, as we did when we were babies. Now, in, in modern life, we tend to breathe very shallow and fast. And I'm going to just share something with you. And let's all do this together so we, we get a sense of what happens. Let's do this as a scientific experiment just to be able to show how powerful it is to be able to master your breath and how much that can have a significant impact on your mental, physical, and emotional state. So the first thing I'd like you to do, everybody watching, is I'd like you just to observe your surroundings in the, the room, the space that you're in, whatever else you're doing. Just look around, look at colors, contours, shapes. Be aware of any background sounds that you hear. Just get a sense of how you feel in your body. Just do a little bit of an internal scan. And just, you know, how do you feel in your body? Is there any tightness, tension, tiredness, etc.? Um, anything else that you're experiencing through your different senses, anything you hear, feel, sense, uh, anything you can see. And we're going to do a little experiment, and let's just see what happens as we do this little experiment. And this exercise, as I said, it's going to take five breaths, deep breaths, but a more natural breath. Many of us are not breathing naturally because we don't have the time and the capacity and the energy to do so. So I'm going to stand up so you can all see, and I'm going to move the, thing, the, the screen down to so my belly. So this is how many of us breathe. We're breathing from our chest. It looks something like this. Now, if you ask, if you observe a baby, uh, if you look at a small baby, you ask them to take a deep breath, it looks something like this. Because if you're breathing from your chest, you're using literally 35 to 40% of your lung capacity. For you to take a full and true breath, you need to be expanding deep into the chest, into the belly. So if you're breathing from up here, you're not going to get enough oxygen on board, which is in turn going to leave you panicky, anxious, overwhelmed, and you can't think clearly. So I would very, very much like you all to do this experiment with me just to see what happens. So I'd like you to imagine there's a triangle that starts at your belly button and the corners of the triangle are here at your hips. Inside the triangle, I'd like you to uh, visualize a ball or a balloon. Every time we take a breath in, we're going to fill that ball or balloon up with air, like so. And when we exhale, we're going to pull the navel to the spine and fully exhale. Now, the great thing about this, you could do it sitting whilst you're driving. You could do it while you're sat on the couch. You could do it while you're standing. You could do it, you know, anywhere, anytime. But as we do this exercise, it will impact every, diff every single different function of our body Every part of our body will work more efficiently and we're going to feel better. So don't take my word for it. Let's do this together. So we're going to take a nice, slow, deep breath in. Fill the bellies up with air. And now we're going to hold for five, four, three, two, one. Now let's exhale, pulling the navel to the spine. Good. Once again, breathe in. 
Fill that belly up with air. And now close your eyes. Let's just go inside for a moment. Just focus on our internal reality. Just taking ourselves from our external reality. Now, obviously, if you're driving or doing something else, we can do this exercise with our eyes open. I'd just like us to just get the maximum benefit by just switching off and focusing on our breath and nothing else. And exhale. And again, nice, slow, deep breath in. Hold. And just be aware of these wonderful growing feelings of inner comfort as we focus on our breath, we focus on our internal reality, just starting to slowly tune out from our external reality just for a few moments and exhaling any remaining tension and tightness in the body. <sighs> nice, slow, deep breath in. Breathing in fresh, revitalizing, reinvigorating air. And now we're just going to hold. Just being aware of all these incredible, wonderful, comfortable changes occurring inside the body, allowing us to feel relaxed. And you can begin to feel calmer and calmer. And ignore those wonderful, comfortable feelings for a moment as we exhale. And last, slow, deep inhalation. And hold. Do a final scan of your body from the top of the head to the tip of the toes to take into account all of the incredible changes that occurred as we've taken these few moments to focus on our breath. And then when you're ready, in no particular hurry, there's no rush, you can exhale, open your eyes, bring yourself back to the room, and let me know how you're feeling. Five breaths, a few moments of your life. What's changed? What's different? What do you notice? What are you aware of? Some of you may feel a little calmer, a little bit more relaxed. You may feel a bit more expanded. Great, you may feel dizzy. Now, what's happened? You've had a, um, a, a rush of oxygenated blood up to the, the brain. So that's your brain saying, thank you for the extra oxygen. If you take a couple of slow breaths, that will start to regulate your breathing. Uh, you may notice things are brighter, clearer, sharper. You may be more aware of some of the background noises. You just may feel a bit more still or a bit more peaceful inside. Some people might feel more energized. But whatever you feel, whatever small or big change have occurred, you did that yourself. No pills, no potions, no special equipment required. It was just reclaiming your power. And the simplest things can yield the biggest benefits. And this is where I'm going to encourage you, just taking those simple steps, like taking deep breath, breathing uh, fully, like staying hydrated and you know, drinking lots of water, like eating healthy, can be tremendous, simple, powerful ways to strengthen your bridge. Add to that some physical activity and some movement, and you're going to find that very quickly your bridge starts to get stronger and stronger. Now, also, we can add to that, you know, communication, peer support, um, you know, asking for help and support, um, contacting colleagues, friends, uh, and other people that can that can be there to, to hear your experiences and to ensure that you're, you're you're not going through this alone. But as I said, my main focus today was just to ensure that you walk away from this to feeling a little bit more empowered, feeling a little bit more like there is steps and action you can take to be able to navigate whatever challenges and circumstances that you face. Uh, Liam has asked a really important question. So we all got different types of stresses. The biggest is financial stress. Um, and yeah, obviously, I, uh, yeah, I would love to be able to come back at some point in the future and talk to you about financial stress. We're more than happy to do that. But one of the key things that I'm going to say to you is whatever the external trigger is, the internal reaction is the same. Whether it's a financial stress, whether it's a family stress, whether it's a, a medical problem, it's our reaction to the external circumstances that cause the internal fight or flight reaction. So that financial problem is causing the same internal response. There isn't a different type of stress. It's not like the body says, oh, I'm now having financial stress. Now I'm having tiredness stress. Now I'm having relationship stress. Now I'm having uh, you know, work stress. That's not how it works. It, stress is stress. It's just the trigger response is different. So yes, obviously I can talk to you about strategies to, to better equip you to cope with the external circumstances, but the internal uh, sort of met methods that we've shared today are true regardless of what the cause is. I hope, I hope that helps. Um, when should I talk to my GP if I'm feeling stressed and anxious? Well, when it gets too much. 
when it gets to the point where you will feel that you're unable to cope, where you've explored other support mechanisms, which we will share with you uh, so, so some places that you can go to to get additional support before we finish, um, then turn to your D GP. Um, I know obviously at the moment it's quite hard to get appointments and to be able to speak to the GP, but if you need the help, please, please, please don't suffer in silence. Don't just try and soldier on and get on with things. Uh, Duncan, this would be a good point to introduce in some of our... Um, uh, support resources. So the first one is our website, um, and Duncan's going to flash that up on the screen, our website where there's tons of resources available, which is www.stress.org.uk. Um, and also we can see on the screen right now, there's lots of different places that you can go to for support. Mind, uh, so you can contact Mind. Uh, there's the Hub of Hope. If you enter your postcode, it will be able to direct you to the closest uh, sort of resource in, in your neighborhood. Shout, so they've got a team of crisis volunteers that can help you. There's another organization called Beyond Shame, Beyond Stigma. And the most important one where we've got tons of resources, and I'm sure Duncan's going to put that up on the screen now, which is our website, which is www.stress.org.uk. Um, so there's lots of resources there. We will share this uh, with y Yassine and James, um, who hopefully will be able to make this available through your community um, as well. Um, and yeah, the, the, all I'm asking for all of you to consider is what can you do? What action can you take every day that's going to help you to start increasing your resilience to cope with the uncharted waters we find ourselves in? We don't know what the future holds. So all you can do, all that is in your power, is to ensure that you're in the best fighting fit shape to cope with whatever challenges the universe is likely to throw at you. Um, so yeah, let's just finish with um, so some final questions. Um, Duncan, if you could just share some of the the support resources, our websites, we put them in the chat box as well. So, uh, you, you know, feel free to kind of paste these. Um, our websites, Duncan, will post those as well. But it, what questions do you have? What, what, what would you like to ask us? What would you like to know from us um, at this time? Now, obviously, I'm not um, able to give you any specific advice regarding the circumstances and challenges that you face. Uh, I appreciate this is tough times for all of you, and I genuinely empathize. What I can help you with is any kind of fears or concerns that you might be experiencing and just you know, be able to, to offer you any particular questions that, that, that uh, sorry, uh, offer you any particular answers to questions that you may have regarding sort of how you're feeling right now. Um, but I genuinely, I'm hoping that um, you are able to find ways to support yourselves through, through the situation and reach out and ask for help where, where, where necessary. I'm not sure if James is still with us. Um, because if so, James may have some final questions. But obviously, uh, if anybody else does, that would be wonderful. James, have you got any questions or anything else you'd like to discuss or explore before we start rounding up? Yeah, I, well, what I'd like to um, maybe hear from you is uh, what, as you deal with other um, organizations and people uh, at this difficult time, it's a unique time. This is like a time no other in any of our lives. Absolutely. Um, lived through something like this in living memory. What what are people? What's normal? What are people experiencing right now? So that we have a sense of maybe we're feeling the same thing, and you can sort of acknowledge that a lot of people are feeling this way in a certain way. I'm only smiling. It's the question everybody will ask us. What's everybody else feeling? What's normal? We are looking for the new norm, and. I'm sorry to break this to you. There isn't one because we're all trying to figure it out. And everyone's like looking to everyone else. How is everyone else coping? How is everyone else reacting? And really, we're in uncharted waters right now. Yeah. And there's, yeah. a, there's a lot of talk. There's a lot of people saying, oh, my God, the world's coming to an end. The skies are falling on our head. There's going to be a lot of people dying and getting sick. There's going to be a lot of people suffering from stress and mental health, etc." cetera. Um, now, ultimately, the more we talk about the problems, the more it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Really, what I would like us to do is just focus on the solutions on what we can do and how we can support each other. The one thing that I've seen is really, really powerful and very beautiful to observe is in this crisis, in this tragedy, particularly here in the UK, I appreciate that you've got people on the call today that are from overseas. But in the UK, we are seeing a strong sense of community. The average you, you know, citizen coming out, supporting their community, supporting the NHS, 
uh, uh, supporting uh, sort of key essential workers, which obviously yourselves, you, you, you know, I, I'm not an expert here, but I would consider yourselves to be essential workers. You are getting people around, vulnerable people, to where they need to be. So this is where I think that we need to applaud the fact that, you know, out of crisis, out of adversity, we are seeing real, real wonderful examples. You know, Captain Tom is a great example, that 100-year-old fellow walking around his garden raising millions of pounds, doing more than, you know, some organizational uh, sort of... Uh, uh, structures have done and more than you know many aspects of government have done and this is where I'm, I'm going to say rather than observing what other people are defining as the norm I think it's up to us to create the norm and particularly for you within your community uh, to use your, your yourselves and each other to define well, what is normal for us what is the new normal for us um, because there is no benchmark there is no precedence in fact you know, don't say this lightly. The closest precedence we've got is Hollywood because they're the only ones that have really got any kind of example of what should happen in a situation like this, but they got it wrong because according to Hollywood, we should all be like, you know, running around chasing after zombies or, or killing each other and looting and that hasn't happened. So we have mm. to celebrate the fact this has brought out, for the most part, the best in humanity yeah, for, for what we've been observing. And this is where we can call on each other, where we can really support each other and ensure as we get through this together, the new norm should be a stronger sense of community, a stronger sense of society, where we celebrate the true heroes in our culture, which are not celebrities and pop stars and actors, but these are the doctors and the nurses and the people that are, are stocking our shelves and we've got food to eat that are driving us around. These are the real heroes where we've got an opportunity to redefine what's really important in our society. And this is where, you, you know, I say to all of you that are here today, I consider you as part of that. You are the heroes that are keeping society moving. When everything mm. else is shut down, when television programs aren't being made, where bars and restaurants are closed down, there are people that are making sure our society is still functional. Mm. And as that, you know, I salute you all as heroes and, 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 and look to yourselves and each other to define what is normal for you, because no one can tell you that. Yeah, very true. Another thought I have, or a question I have is, um, do you have any tips on how we not only look after ourselves, but that we look after other people? Um, yeah. I see in particular, um, people can suffer uh, uh, during this at the hands of other people and we see domestic violence is, is uh, a big problem at the moment. Uh, uh, how, how do we keep a, ourselves calm but also make sure that we look after others and we keep a, you know, a happy situation at home as well? No, absolutely. And I think it's the age-old analogy. Like, you know, you get on a plane and before the plane takes off, they go for the safety instruction. They, they say if there's a drop in cabin pressure, before you try and put a mask on someone else, like an old person or a child, you have to put it on yourself first. You cannot help anybody else if you're tired, exhausted, stressed, overwhelmed, angry, frustrated yourself. Mm -hmm. So everything we've been talking about today is so important. If you're stressed and angry or frustrated, you know, we're allowed to get out to walk every day. Thankfully, you know, we, we still have that liberty available to us. Get out. And even if you get back from a late shift, and it might mean going to bed half an hour or 45 minutes later. Being able to do that and just let off some steam is really going to be massively beneficial because ultimately it is frustrating times. And there are channels we have to release that frustration. And if it means that you have to get into the garden or into a park and you know punch on a punch bag or kick a tree or something you know kick a football around some way to physically release that tension is going to put you into a better state and this is where i feel a lot of us uh, we're just suffering in silence and we're feeling overwhelmed but also talking about it you know as we're doing today as many of you've been willing to share and you know james you've been really open and honest with some of your questions and some of your thoughts the better we get with this the easier it becomes because of, what do they say? A problem shared is a problem solved. Reach out to a friend, a colleague, a family member, you know, someone that is going to listen and just give you the space to be able to offload and to you for you to be able to provide that for someone else, to give them a platform just to be able to get things off their chest. Because, you know, once we've got it on our chest, we feel lighter. If we carry it around, the pressure builds, the pressure builds, and eventually the pressure cooker will blow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, another question. Uh, again, treat this as rhetorical if you like, but um, 
I, I understand the stress response is fight or flight. That's what we've been, you know, through nature, we've been conditioned to do. How do we know in our situation when it's time to fight and when it's time to run? You know, is, is, when do we know that um, the best way to cope with our stress is to leave the industry, do something else? Or when do we say, no, we can cope with this. We can, if all we need to do is find these techniques and breathe and drink water and stay away from sugar, and we can actually cope with this stress. What, what, no, how let, do we make that decision? Let, let me be clear. I, I don't want to sound like I'm in any way, shape or form patronizing anyone. I'm not saying I'll no, drink I water, you, you know, no. eat healthy and exercise and everything will be fine. All no, that I do, and I don't want you to think that I think that for a second. These are all incredibly important things to do. But what I'm trying to get to is that when we look at the pandemic, when we look at the state of the gig economy, we're looking at some fundamental stressors. It's a brick wall, and do we keep banging our head against it? I, that's that's the point I'm making. Of course, we have to keep ourselves fit and healthy, and we've got to manage our stress every day. Um, but we've got this elephant in the living room as well all the time. Of course. Now, ultimately, there is a fight ahead. Now, yeah. you're going to fare far better in that fight if you're in a really good state to do so. You know, Excellent. a battle-weary, exhausted, stressed-out soldier ain't no good. Excellent yeah, you know, point. Like, Excellent point. So, so ultimately, like, you, you know, I, and I'm not sitting here saying that you must show up for this fight. You have a choice. And, you, you know, some of you may decide that this is too much and you will self-select and decide that it's having too much of an impact on your health, your well-being, your family, etc. And you may decide to, 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 to step out. But for those of you who are willing and ready to step up for, for the fight ahead, um, the, 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 the best thing that you can do is prepare yourself as best as possible. And the more fight you have, the further you're going to go. And ultimately, like, you, you know, this is not just true for your industry. This is true for all of us. We are all going to have to fight and dig deep to find a pathway out of this. You know, unless you are a massive global organization, like sadly the ones that many of you are going to be fighting against, who have bottomless pits of money to throw at these kind of problems, the everyday average Joe, you know, even people that are running medium-sized organizations and, and, and even some large organizations are, are going to be struggling. And we will have to all be really tough and resilient and fight our way out of this. And this is why this period is so crucial. The ones, Those of us that take the time to prepare ourselves are going to come out of the, the other end fighting. And that's what we want. We want you all coming out of the corner uh, you know, fighting when the bell goes and that bell will go. Are you going to be ready or are you going to be sitting there in the corner on your on your stool begging for someone to throw the white towel in? Mm. And, and if that's the case, then obviously no one is going to hold that against you. But I'm hoping there are many of us that will be able to step up and help fight for a new future, a better future. One that the post-COVID-19 world that, 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 that it allows us to, to, to look at something where we are all treated more fairly. We have more respect for the environment, where we have more of a sense of community, where you know pollution, all the things, all the ailments that are troubling our world today, we can use this pause, this reset, as a way of being able to find a better way forward. Yeah. And that is my sincerest hope, dream, and desire. And but that's where it needs all of us. This isn't one person that's going to come and save you, save us. There is no savior. Every single one of us has a responsibility to contribute to shaping this wonderful new post-COVID world that we have the opportunity to be able to create together. Yeah, I think that's right. I mean, I think when I think about um, what's ahead of us. I think what we need more than anything is resilience because we are up against organizations uh, that have unlimited amounts of money, unlimited amounts of uh, power, but their money and power is um, transactional. Uh, we've got moral authority, we've got people power, um, but we need to build the resilience and the solidarity to exercise that people power. And so, so, we've got, yeah, so we've got to, um, We've got to find a way to stick together, work together, uh, relay if you like. So some people take the load for a while and then other people you know, step back and other people carry it for a while. That's what we need to do. James, um, let me give you my final thought on this subject. Yeah. History has taught us every single empire will eventually collapse. 
No empire is adjured, whether it's the Roman Empire, the Ottoman Empire, the British Empire, they always collapse because ultimately they get to the point where the people are not going to accept the status quo anymore and they will rebel yeah. against it. Now, yeah. this is basically what we're facing with the, the, you know, with the gig economy, with some of the global organizations like the Amazons of the world. That they, they are empires, but they're not political empires. They're commercial empires. But there's yeah. more of us. So it really, it comes down to us to really stand up and be counted and redefine the future. One that is devoid of empires where we can reclaim our power. Because as I said, we have that potential. But it starts with you. You have to reclaim your personal power before you can contribute to the collective power. And many of us are feeling so disempowered right now, whether it comes to... You know, our civil liberties, our movements, our health, our resilience, our well-being, our financial affairs. And ultimately, we really do need to take the time to understand how we can start to reclaim our power individually, collectively. And then obviously the next step is, uh, you know, societally. Absolutely. Well, listen, thank you so much, Neil. It's been a really fascinating session. Um, I wonder if Yasin would like to come in and if Yasin has any more final questions or comments and uh, maybe we can wrap this up but it's been a real gift and uh, neil and um, very timely one so thanks so much uh, for coming along tonight and as you're bringing yasin in we may want to bring duncan in he may have any final oh, please, comments yeah, as well duncan. duncan please feel free to jump in for uh, any final thoughts or comments i think there's a, a short delay while they um and get themselves on but also if any of you have any further questions or queries uh things that you'd like to speak to us about directly if you visit our website you can drop us a message through that there is a tool on our website um that allows you to be able to test your own stress levels uh, we've got a 30-day challenge as well so you know feel feel free to to make use of all those free resources excellent duncan you're still muted my friend uh, nope that's a mistake mate sorry <laughs> Okay, Duncan, any, any final questions or thoughts or comments? Yeah, of course. Go to stress.org.uk. Uh, we've got about three, 400 tips, tricks, and signposting uh, resources to help you out with your personal mental well-being. Awesome. Excellent. Well, listen, it was a real pleasure. It's been such a joy to be here to, 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 to talk to you all and to serve you this evening. I genuinely wish you the best in, in, in the fight ahead. Um, and um, yeah, as I said, like I'd love to be able to come back and support you again in the future. We talk, you know, somebody picked up the comment on, around financial stress. That's something we can help with in the future if that's uh, something that would be beneficial. That would be great. Thank you so much. Okay, um, I think we can uh, leave it there. It's been a fascinating hour. It's been a, it'll be a great resource uh, on our page for people to come and visit over the next couple of days. So thank you very much. Um, Yasin, are you, are you there? Do you want to come in and uh, and close us? down for the evening where's yasin uh okay uh yasin says i can finish it okay i'm gonna say i'm gonna say good night thank you very much neil thanks uh thanks everybody for watching see you again soon bye-bye